Greetings Internet, this is BJ Black and welcome to part 6 of my walkthrough of the demo of part 3 of Monless Quest Paradox RPG. This time, we get to enter the Ma'o Castle at last. <clears throat> then, it's finally time to enter the Ma'o Castle. But, one final time I shall confirm. Have you done everything that you need to do? Have you left nothing undone in the present circumstances? By doing this, the situation will shift greatly. Our position and our relationships with the outside world will change. Before that, wrap everything up that you've left undone. There could be instances where if you don't do it now, you won't get another chance. And so I think the primary events she's referring to are the three rebellions. Recall that in each one, one of the Shiten no figures prominently. But once we invade this castle, the Shiten no will be here to play their parts. And they can't very well be both here and scattered around the world putting on rebellions at the same time, so entering the castle calls them back. And they will have resolved the rebellions in their own ways, leaving with no rebellions to fix. And sometimes no rewards or recruitable characters. Anyway... Oh. <clears throat> uh, we have in our remaining in our possession Lacroix's notes. By any chance, have you forgotten about it? Ha <laughs> ha. Silly girl, I haven't forgotten at all. I've been deliberately ignoring that. And I'm going to keep ignoring it until you actually put your foot down and stop my progress, so do kindly put up or shut up. Before we enter the Mao Castle, let's hand off these notes. There should have been a location that seems promising. Yeah, Sonia told us to investigate the ruins south of the Godbird Shrine during the review episode. These notes must not be lost. Before we storm the Mao Castle, let's give it to the one who needs it. This could be the last chance to hand off these notes. Before we enter the Mao Castle, we want to handle this matter. Well, balls. I told her to put out and shut up, and she. But to think she would actually stop my progress. Like I told her to. The audacity, really. Well, let's go do that then. So, if you haven't done this before, you do need to have Chrome in your part. Recruited, at least. She doesn't need to be in your party. And I'm not sure about the New Game Plus... Uh, ...intricacies. If she's just in your game from a New Game Plus and you haven't done her actual events, whether this will trigger or not... Well, you'll figure it out if you come and try and do it, and it won't. Cirque de Croa. It's kind of a touching scene, if that were part of what I was doing today, which it's not. And yes, I have to collect all of these six in order to leave the room, in order to teleport off. Now let's try again. Oops. Okay, we're back. And same story here, up until the point where Promistine objected. Instead we get this. Anything left undone, huh? And we decide there's still something left undone or enter the Mao Castle. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. No, there's nothing left undone. Come on, let's march into the Mao Castle. Give it your all. There's a hot welcome waiting for us. Fighting spirits completely full. Let's go. With this, we set foot into the Mao Castle. Waiting for us therein was the decision of the fate of the world. 
Finally, the time of decision is approaching. The time to choose. The goddess or the dark god. I've been waiting for you, Mao-sama. But I haven't been waiting for here to offer you a warm welcome. Hmm. I know. To return to the Mao station, I need to show my power, right? It's a great help that you need no explanation. So then, come, let's fight. A strength to be expected, but to hold so much while your power is sealed. Huh, have you got that then? I have certainly observed your power. From here on, I, Yao, shall serve by your side. I do not mind taking you as an ally, but is it alright? This too is Tamamo-sama's order. Challenge the Mao, and if defeated, lend her your power, she directed me. Humph, <laughs> that fox. Mm, yes, indeed, a fox. Yao has joined the party. Proceeding further, powerful monsters will be attacking us. Of course, the Shiten no should also be standing in our way. But we shall not retreat one step. Pushing on to the throne room, we let the world know that the Mao has returned. Okay. But first, let's wander around aimlessly for a while. What's this? By the look on your face, you're pretty tired. If you continue in that direction, there's a recovery spring. You can rest your body there. This girl. Wasn't she here in the Mao Castle 500 years ago? I've heard that she's been here since the reign of my mother. Hey, excuse me. The seventh Mao. This could be a position with a long history. Oh yeah, you keep telling me this is nine Mao's later. Is she immortal? Okay, let's head downstairs. I should have known uh, better than to improvise the route. Okay. The door is locked. Okay, but why? Getting to this thing is painfully easy. You just need to go to these stairs on the west side of the castle. Down here, the <clears throat> excuse me. Down here, the well-known hero Heinrich's equipment is on exhibit. Although it is a mystery by what route they were gathered here. And yeah, it's way more normal for the hero to return to his hometown where Ghost King eventually sells the equipment off for small medals 500 years later. Natural progression of these things. Be that as it may, I respect the strong regardless of race. The hero Heinrich is also a warrior that I admire. Okay, good for you. But what I got out of that is there's loot. The door's locked. So, this is Heinrichs, obviously. But how inconsiderate of them to keep them locked up. I'm a hero and we loot this shit. It is rightfully mine. <clears throat> the secret lever, when you pull it like kachak, opens all the doors on this left floor, I heard. Secret lever. Got it. Ahead of here, it's El Betier-sama's room. Right now, she's not there, though. She's working. Okay. Must be this. This is El Betier's room. There isn't anything particularly important here. El Betier? She's one of the Shiten No, isn't she? Why would such a prominent Yoma live in such a squalid room? 
Like the other Shiten no, I granted her a proper room, but she said that she can relax better here. And she took up residence by the waterway. Anyway, there's no need to linger here. She's not here right now, but if she returns, it will be a hassle. Hmm. 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 I see something. There's a lever. Lower it? Yeah, sure. What's the worst that could happen? Outside, there's the sound of doors opening. Huh. And the door's open. But this isn't right at all. Hey, you. You said that a secret lever opened the doors. That was not a secret at all. It was literally out in the open in the very next room. But I guess I'll forgive you because you're good. Because you're a good girl. But describe things more accurately next time, okay? Now we've got loot. Heinrich's stuff. We get a physical secrets book. We get Heinrich's shield. Heinrich's helmet. Heinrich's armor. Heinrich's sword. Which is as it should be. Straight into my inventory where it will never be seen again. Next point. These girls. The three black nobles died 500 years ago. They lost their lives fighting the hero Heinrich. The details of Black Alice's war is common knowledge to any educated Yoma. Just how have so many gotten it into their heads that they still live? Hmm, interesting. No, the three black nobles are still alive. Even now they are guarding the treasure room. Just how have you gotten into it into your head that they died 500 years ago? It's truly a bizarre affair that so many believe so. Hmm. Well, let's leave these little controversies aside for the more important point we got from that. There's a treasure room to raid. And... Well, this is unusual, isn't it? <laughs> Such naughty children. Trying to sneak your way into the treasure room. Huh? I remember you girls. Yeah, it's Black Rose, Black Snake, and Black... Dimber... Bandicoot. Okay, yeah, I guess I don't remember them. We are the three Black Nobles. Oh, it seems that you know of us. Right, we fought these three. But that was 500 years ago in a parallel world. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't these guys from the past? Why are they here in the present, too? Good question. So, the events in the parallel world are having an effect on our singularity world here. We can't consider this phenomenon any other way. Come to think of it, the Administrator's Tower appeared in our world as well. The parallel worlds in our world are having effects on each other. Either way, it looks like we'll have to fight them again. You bandits after the Maul's treasures. Now you can taste my spear. Hey, this castle is my castle. And in the first place, why are you always in the treasure room? Uh, the reason is, we're always enjoying our tea break here. Hey, you don't need to tell them that. As expected, you're idiots, huh? Anyway, let's go. <clears throat> no way for us to be defeated. We retreat. Hey, don't you get the feeling that this has happened before? 
Well, in case it wasn't clear, many of their lines were recycled from the other world encounter. And now Black Bandicoot is starting to realize it. That will be enough, you three. You are... Could it be... Your Majesty? Why do you still live? Uh, hmm. To start with, shouldn't we be dead too? They too have their memories completely confused, it seems. Getting caught up in a twist of space-time, their connection with cause and effect has gone amiss. Anyway, you shall come with me. I'll show you how to in fully enjoy this other world banquet. Anywhere you wish, your majesty. Let us serve by your side. You lot too were her majesty's servants, right? <laughs> Best regards to you. Yeah, I don't actually want them in my party, thanks. The three black nobles joined our party. Well, the obstructions are gone. Now we search the treasure room. In the past and in the future, what we do is the same. <laughs> Just like pirates do. It's such fun. This is why I can't give up piracy. Okay then. We got the Queen Coronation Book. This is a race change item, used when appointing queens of the monster races. Except we've seen a Queen Alraune and Queen Insect rise to their stations without it. Anyway. <clears throat> Only the Mao is allowed to use this, so there will be no problem if I take it. Mm-hmm. We get one Meteoric Iron. This is Meteoric Iron. It's a valuable treasure of my castle. A legendary weapon material. But there's no smith in the world who can work this. With the exception of the legendary blacksmith Randolph. But Randolph's whereabouts are presently unknown. Although, if we could find him, we could have him make us some powerful equipment. But more importantly, he could teach Poppy. We got a World Chronicle. Weird name for a weapon. Ara, this is... It's a staff said to be a favorite of the 8th Mao Black Alice. You don't even need to explain that to us. <laughs> it's remained here to this day, but no new user has appeared. You've been lonely, haven't you? Its owner's image was so bad nobody wanted to use it. So, it was stored away here. Okay. We got a Snake Empress Armor. Lamiantine. This is a war dress passed down to Maos for generations. I'll equip it and recapture the throne. Haha. <laughs> Except I haven't got you in a configuration where you can equip it. Anyway. This other chest has some trash nobody cares to comment on, and that pot's a magic pot. It's always a magic pot. I mean, I haven't been checking everything, but... Pots never seem to hold plain old items anymore. Just magic pots. Anyway, with these side stories done, let's head for the Mao throne room. I should have told you there's a magic circle for recovery just off screen here. Too late now. And Tamamo. Tamamo, huh? You understand without each of us saying, right? Those who try to sit upon the Mao's throne must show their power. Nobody will come to serve under those who can't show power. I've taught you many times. You understand, don't you? 
Huh. I'll show my power however many of you make me. I'll let the whole world know. Sorry, but I won't hold back at all. If you lose to me here, I can't expect anything of you ahead. <laughs> I too. Don't think I'll stay my hand because you're the one who raised me. I'll pull out your tails till you're down to one. Harsh. She's so cute though. Jeez. I've utterly lost, haven't I? Nothing I can do. You can proceed onward. Now wait. Before that, I'll pull out all but one tail. Sa stop that! Don't pull my tail seriously. They actually get along well. If you think so, Liko. Anyway, with this I am defeated. But Elbeti and Grambelia remain. Hmph. <laughs> Whoever the opponent is, I'll force them to yield. Yes, that's reassuring. Then, see you later. So Tamomo disappears herself. Somehow I can't deny feeling like this is a fixed match, though. But it's not like she was holding back on us. After all, she needed to fight seriously to show the new Mao's power. Hmm, <laughs> isn't this going well? I can't let my underlings scorn me in this form. It's a special opportunity. I'll run, run completely rampant showing my power. We're doing most of the work, though. Obeying Tamamo-sama's orders, I shall continue to lend you all my power. So, that being what it is, there are Shito and no waiting ahead, no mistake. Let's put our spirit into it and proceed. Oh, balls. This place is... What is this place? Just what is happening? Can you hear my voice? Through another dimension, I'm accessing, accessing your consciousness. That voice. I remember your... Child of Judgment Luca. You recall meeting me before. Allow me to reintroduce myself once more. I am Raffaella, one of the seven archangels presiding over protection. Raphaela, one of the seven archangels, you say? Is that so? You've contacted us from the other world ruled by the goddess. Indeed, that is the case. You should already be aware of our world. Heaven. That is the name that we have given our world. The parallel world where the goddess Elias fully triumphed over the dark god that's called heaven. Under Elias Sama, where we are promised the greatest good for the greatest number. That is the paradise that we inhabit. Hmm. The paradise ruled by Elias, huh? No doubt it's a false utopia tied down by the God's laws. The people of the Dark God world do disparage our world like that. However, that is a great error. Elias-sama shows to the people their paths, one by one. Those paths are how they can live the happiest, each of them. By showing them the path, depending on their abilities and preferences, everyone is satisfied. They are promised a society where they live happily. A world where the right to make your own decisions is stolen. You can consider it that way, though. To eliminate choices that make themselves unhappy, is that a denial of freedom? 
Law and order exists in your society, does it not? You too must be living in obedience to the framework of society. Do you also consider that a denial of freedom? No, you must not. In contrast to that, how about the world that the Dark God rules? To call it a world of complete freedom, it sounds good, does it? Admit it? But the truth of it is, it is a world without proper laws, governed by the law of the jungle. With the strong ruling over the weak, it becomes a hell of covetousness. Can an honest person live in a world like that? Who will defend the weak and the needy? In our world, Elias Sama protects the weak. A path is shown to every type of person, and they are promised happiness. In spite of this, will you choose the Dark God's world? That world, ruled by the brutal law of the jungle, in the name of freedom. Hmm, maybe we are ambivalent. Ah, oh, no, just kidding, we aren't. Well, Alice isn't. But, destruction approaches our world. You must be aware, all the worlds face an extinction crisis. The Dark God world intends to save only their own world, no matter the cost. So, they are trying to destroy ours. On the occasion of this crisis, we initiated the Ark Plan. From the various worlds, we choose those who ought to survive and save them. You decide yourselves whom to save and whom not to. Don't you think that's self-righteous? We cannot save everyone. Our world, too, has a limit to the population that it can support. But, don't you know of the plan the Dark God is advancing? It is truly the epitome of evil. They will annihilate the people of all the parallel worlds, and even the worlds themselves. And they will draw those souls into their own world. Since they can't save everyone, they usher in their souls alone. By doing so, they aim to unify all the worlds. That's their objective. The Dark God won't cut and run, abandoning anyone to die. She's different from you lot, selecting whom should be saved. Luca, you have journeyed with Alice Fees up to this point. But you must not be persuaded by her determination. Do you know the suffering and sadness that the Dark God's plan will bear? As you saw in the world up to now, you must understand. The Dark God's plan was the cause of much suffering. Don't lend an ear to her, Luca. It sounds like a reasonable story, but its various faults cannot be hidden. In the end, it is a world under authoritarian rule by the goddess. And despite being a goddess, she too makes mistakes in her way. Mm -hmm. Child of Judgment, the time of the great decision is already approaching before your eyes. The goddess Elias Sama will accept you, making the right just decision, and your allies and she will bestow her blessings upon you. Follow the guidance of the goddess, child of judgment, Luca. We've returned, it looks like. <laughs> A solicitation from heaven, huh? Indeed, it is the sort of thing that lot would try. Simply don't waver, Luca. Don't forget that in the goddess's world, 
the great majority of people will be abandoned. Phew, what a windbag. On to the next floor. Eh. Uh, ah, I remember now. Actually, it wasn't far at all. Mole Summer. As expected, you impede my path, El Betier. You know the Dark Rod's plan, don't you? I've been entrusted with its final endgame. I'll draw in all the world's life forms, integrate them. Then I'll self destruct, releasing the souls to the Dark God's world. Yeah, we went over this in the Cockroach Rebellion event. Although that was an optional event, so for plot reasons, yeah, they go over it briefly again here. <clears throat> I've already made my resolution. Mao-sama, how about you? You need not ask. Having come this far, I have already resolved on what to do. In that case, show me your will and the power to execute it. If you can do that, then I will follow you once more. Very well, I'll show you my determination. As expected, we can't avoid a fight, huh? So then, let's go! Certainly, you've shown me, Mao-sama, your determination and resolution. I will obey you from now on. Good. In that case, stand by for now. I will, as you watch, proclaim my ascension to the Mao's throne, and after that, pass my judgment on you. Yes. Then, until later. So Abeltier leaves. Good. We continue onwards. Just one sheet and no remains. Gran Belia. Gran Belia, huh? She is most likely the most outstanding swordsman in the world. Even so, right now she harbors a deep indecision. We're just gonna fight through with all our power no matter who the opponent is. And so, we took another step onwards. Oh, double balls. Another dimension? Is this the same place as before? Raphael again? No, this presence is. I am one of the six ancestors, Saja. From the world ruled by the Dark God, the Demon World, I have come. The Demon World? That's the parallel world where the Dark God tri triumphed over the Goddess. I am not here in substance. I am not more than a phantasmal guide for your course. But with the great decision before you, I shall guide you, destroyer of worlds, Luca. Saja is... it cannot be. The second Mao... Further, to call the Luca destroyer of worlds... That boy houses a great destiny. His mission is to extinguish an evil world as a destroyer. Uh, I will? No way. Badass, right? But that itself is the key to saving all of the worlds. Unifying all the parallel worlds into one, you erect a perfect world. Unification of all the worlds. As the Littlest Sisters told us, that's the Dark God's plan. Saja-sama, I plead for you to tell us about the Dark God's world. 
where you live. <laughs> I'm pretty damn sure she'd tell you even if you didn't ask. <clears throat> the Dark God does not rule. Everything is entrusted to the people who reside therein. It is a vigorous society, overflowing with a free and broad-minded ethos. That is the world that the Dark God desires. Like I thought, the Dark God is a tremendously wise person. Trusting in our independent spirit, she entrusts us with our own autonomy. Greatly different from Elias, who rules everything author authoritarianly. As expected, it is the Dark God that is the one overflowing with affection. The Dark God is a strict person, but she esteems the people's free will. In comparison, in the goddess Elias' world, the people are slaves of God. They say that everybody lives in happiness under the will of God. But the people of that world are puppets robbed by God of the free will to make decisions. The people believe themselves happy, while their right to live free is stolen. Such a thing is not more than the utopia of slaves. And the people who aren't chosen are eliminated without mercy. There's not a scrap of tolerance in that ruthlessly oppressive society. I feel the same, Saja-sama. I too cannot think of such a world as paradise. Tolerance is granted when you trust your people. Because of tolerance, people are self-aware that they are the constituents of society. Yeah, Brown knows much. Yes, that is correct. In our world, it is not God that governs, but the people. However, that world of ours also draws near to destruction. As you know, all the parallel worlds are at a point of an extinction crisis. The only method to escape destruction is the unification of all the parallel worlds. For that purpose, we must take make our world into a unique and stable singularity world. But the Dark God shall not forsake the people of other parallel worlds, will lead their souls into our world, and realize unification. But to do that, a necessary step is to sever their souls from their bodies. Said simplistically, there is a need to kill them. Of course, we understand the dissatisfaction there. But taking their lives is not more than a necessary step. The soul, separated from the body, undergoes unification in our world. In the world become one, they can experience their lives as their essential selves. No that it is not killing, but the work of transferring souls. All the souls will be saved and return to the Dark God's world. Even after reasoning it out in my head, my, my sentiments as expected. No, I've determined not to waver. Alice fees the 15th. Your mother, too, wavered, but ultimately, she resolved. Mother. Destroyer of Worlds, Luca. The Great Destruction approaches before your eyes. Will you become the sword of the Dark God and see through the unification of a perfect world? Or will you support the goddess and forsake many people? There is no pondering over which you will choose. The Dark God is waiting for you. Mm. 
we've returned. Luca, I will follow the Dark God, and, carrying on my mother's will, I will become the executor of the Unification Plan. It seems that you too have a great task under the Dark God. I believe that you will continue to fight with me, for the sake of the world. So, Luca, you know the decision that you should make, in the choice awaiting you, don't you? Hmm, Luke is still staying on the fence. Well, it is up to the player, not the player character after all. Oh, Blarg. So, you've come. Grumbelia. As I thought, finally standing in our way, it's you. Before you is the Mao's throne room. If you want to proceed, defeat me and go. Hmm. It is evident, your spirit isn't in this. This one will be my final battle. Even if I win, I'm laying down my sword. Even if I win, huh? The way you say it, you already, as you already assume you'll lose. Bitch slapped. I guess I'll have to beat some life back into my trusted retainer. Let's go, Grambelia. I too have a reason I can't back down now. Let's go, Grambelia. Easy, Luca. No need to get fired up fighting this particular loser. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've lost again. Yep. Put your tail between your legs and scurry off. The grown-ups have worlds to save here. Just what has happened to you, Grandmelia? Your sword skills could force even me to recoil. Where have they disappeared to? Bitch slapped again. Oh god. I want you out of the way, I don't want to hear your fucking sob story. <sighs> Before I knew it, my liege, Alice Fees the 16th, was chased off of the throne. And my new liege became the prior monarch, Her Majesty the 15th. The Shiten no of the Mao army are, naturally, there to serve the Mao. But the 16th, to whom I pledged my allegiance, was now a vagrant. To serve the 15th, the proper Mao, or to follow the 15th, chased out of the position. My heart wavered and vacillated. Yeah, not a hard decision. Further, the orders I received from the 15th were exceedingly incomprehensible. It was like I was receiving orders I couldn't understand and, and cutting down innocent people. Uh, yeah, that's what you did, dumbass. Because they're my liege's orders, I don't get to question the reasons behind them. That's how a warrior should be. But I couldn't devote myself to be my liege's sword. My sword was disturbed, and my losses piled up. My fight against the one called the 17th was also, in effect, a loss. Alice the 17th. That's Nellis. Yeah, in case we need a reminder. That person, I don't know why, knew my sword thoroughly. No, it was as though she had learned the techniques, then gone on to expand them. 
that's when I felt it. Could it not be that my horde, that my sword had gotten old, I felt. And, hero Luca, I crossed its swords with you several times. I sense that yours is a sword filled with youth and the future. In contrast to that, the stagnation of my sword, I felt like I had gained decades of age. But you're only halfway through your twenties. To the long lifespan of Yulma, you're as good as a child. And that night, I can't forget, when the man called the Mao Killer appeared in the Mao's throne room. Mao Killer? You mean Marcellus? That man appeared all of a sudden in the Mao's throne room. From what I could see, he emerged from empty space. Who the hell are you? Alice V is the 15th. I'm taking your life here. Oh, you're the famous Mao killer. In that case, now is my end, as fated in the true history. Knave, I won't let you lay a hand on the Mao. I, immediately lunging with my, with my sword, cut through empty space in vain. Kit. You aren't an opponent for bringing out the Kirin or the Hyokicho. Continuing with a second attack and a third, he dodged them all and I was fruitlessly cutting through air. Kirin, Hyokicho, skills, or no, summonings. If there's no need to bring them out, is he saying I'm beneath him? What's going on? I can't even graze him, although I've mastered serene battle. Your aptitude isn't bad, but you haven't fought an opponent stronger than yourself, have you? Have you come this far, forcing lesser opponents to yield you to your strength? The way you maneuver in battle, it's too clumsy. Okay. In that case, secret technique, key in! Only now barking loudly and unleashing your technique. You can't possibly defeat a greater opponent like that. A single thrust manifested just like that, and my technique was flattened. This man had unthinkable ability. By physical abilities we were an even match. And no, if it was just in terms of strength, I was higher. Despite that, our skills were fundamentally different. This man ex skill excels to a startling degree at techniques for cutting down opponents stronger than himself. With killing techniques, don't shout. Don't rage. Like sneaking in, slide into their spirits opening. The man with an easy movement unleashed his sword. And no, that's not right. It's this, this man's killing move. Dimensional cut. Effortlessly, but with terrifyingly, pre terrifyingly precise timing, he unleashed a flash of his sword. It exceeded my comprehension. This is... In that instant, I wavered between blocking and dodging. I could see him release it, slowly. I could think that it was blockable head-on. 
But my instincts rang an alarm. Don't block it. Dodge. Yeah. Obeying my instincts, I stooped my body and dodged. Your, appearance, your experience is shallow, but your sense is good. If you'd blocked it, you were dead. That one attack, I could see it rend space itself. His, his attack snapped space-time apart and swept the room clean. His opponent's defense had absolutely no meaning. Tearing apart the dimension itself, his sword defied human knowledge. What is this technique? Wow! Although I dodged a direct hit, I got caught up in the shockwave. I was blown away, entirely out of the throne room. At this time, I was no opponent to the Mao killer. I was an obstacle to drive away with the swing of a sword. Not enough of a threat to kill. And by the time I ran back to the Maho, it was all over. That's the whole story of how I was made to realize my true powerlessness. Even now, the attack that Maho killer released is burned into my eyes. That flashing sword cutting space itself. Probably it was a chaos type sword technique. The chaos power that he holds, he channeled through his he channeled it through his sword and released it. My very spirit was cut down by that sword flash splitting the dimensions. What remained afterwards was a warrior with a broken sword. With this, the story is over. I've subjected you to a long talk. You're damn right you did. Now get out of the way. I've wavered and lost my way. I've piled up pathetic losses. I couldn't even protect my liege. Here, the curtain falls on the life of such an unsightly warrior. Great. So, you gonna kill yourself or do I get to do it? Don't tell me that you intend to die. Oh man, you're pussying out on me, Luca. No, I'm laying down my sword and living as a hermit, I think. I shouldn't be taking up a sword again for the rest of my life. As a warrior, I died here. You guys and I won't be meeting again. Well, that's a saving grace. Is that truly what you want? I told you, Mao-sama, win or lose, this match is my last. Grambelia, the Mao killer's sword flash. You said it's burned into your eyes. That's right, Shisho. That is proof that you aren't burned out as a warrior. Even so, will you lay down the sword? I've already decided, Shisho. I'm sorry for being an unskilled pupil. Is that so? Then, I can't say anything. Mao Sama and Hero Luca. I hope your path leads to victory and glory. So then, goodbye. Good riddance!
Grand Belly leaves. She's left. I wonder if that was for the best. A swordsman of that caliber decided of her own will to abandon the sword. Outsiders don't get to criticize. More than that, there's a mountain's worth of things we need to do. It may be seem cold, but we haven't the time to worry about her. You're right. We bear the fate of the world on our backs right now. Come, let's proceed onward. Finally, the Mao's throne is before us. Now nothing stands in our way. With this, we proceeded to the Mao's throne room. The time of the great decision approached. Yeah, what a whiny little bitch. You don't know how much I hate her. I don't know whom to serve, the proper Mao or foes know how. Don't care. I felt like I was killing innocents. Then stop. I kept losing to people. That's life, grow up. An interdimensional demigod kicked my ass and broke my spirit. Fuck right off. He kicked your ass, sure, but if your spirit was so weak as to break, that's on you. Besides, then you could stop killing innocents and serve your deposed Mao without conflict and you didn't even do that. Hope she never comes back, but I just know she will. Hope she likes the pocket Mao castle because she's never getting into my party. <clears throat> Warning. In the trial version, you cannot save beyond this point. Ah. Well. Sounds like a good place to end this video, then. The great decision and everything connected will be its own part. Before that, however, I will be doing an Elias side video of the Mao Castle. There are a couple of gameplay differences. So, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.